most weight loss journeys that people take in before they really even get started. A lot of them are complicated and involve counting, uh, portion controls, you name it. Now, the weight loss journey that I am on is completely different, but it is the most uh, effective I have ever done. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I have been on a weight loss journey for the last, oh, let me see now, almost four months. I started on the carnivore lifestyle on May 6th, and I have lost some significant weight since. I hit another milestone on the scale this morning by going into another set of numbers that I haven't been in. I have officially entered a weight class that I haven't been in since I was probably, probably 15, 20 years. Now, I didn't start really putting on weight until I moved here to Arkansas and I injured myself. And I had an entire year where I was pretty immobile. I couldn't do a whole lot. And I started putting on the weight, and I put it on quick. And everybody that knows when you start putting on a lot of weight, it is, it's a lot easier to put it on than it is to get it off. And the way you put on weight is by non-activity and eating. Uh, our bodies are not made to not do work. Our bodies are made to be active. And so when you're not active anymore, you know, it just adds to the issue. You combine that with what we have in the grocery store today. Now, if you're old enough, think back. You don't have to go too far back. Maybe the 70s, early 80s. The grocery stores... Uh, Number one, you didn't have large chains of grocery stores like you do today. And when you have large chains, they start to form a monopoly. Okay. Now, I've lived all over the country. You, you got Smiths out west, uh, like Colorado, and that you got Publix. Or no, that's Florida. You got Cub Foods in Colorado. Uh, Every part of the country you go, you got a certain chain. Uh, There are several. Now, Walmart has pretty much taken over a lot. You still have your big grocery store chains, but Walmart, Sam's Club, have pretty much taken over the scene. Uh, They squeezed out almost all of the small grocery stores that we knew as a kid that had the healthy foods. Now, you walk in a grocery store now, I want you to do this next time you go, because you're going to lose a pound doing this. I want you to walk up and down each aisle. Just do this as you're shopping. And I want you to make a note of what food is healthy in that entire aisle compared to what's in that aisle. And by healthy, I mean foods we had 50 years ago that have not changed. And you're going to find there isn't a whole heck of a lot. You may see the same product on the shelf that you saw 50 years ago. But I can almost guarantee you the ingredients have changed. And there's a reason on the ingredients label. And trust me, they wouldn't even put that on there if it wasn't required by law. But there is a reason. It is in such small print. You're not going to see this in big print. Because they can do what they want, and you're not going to notice. You're going to keep buying, okay, let's say you buy Aunt Jemima. Well, they don't call it that no more. Whatever they call it. Let's let's just say pancake mix. And you've been buying that same brand for 40 years. I can almost guarantee you that a lot of that ingredients that was in the original compared to today is changed. And not for the better. The the drive today is to make food taste better, taste sweeter, and get you hooked. It's all about greed and nothing else. 
They don't care about your health. This CEO is getting millions of dollars and bonuses every year. He could care less about you. He should be in the same category as a drug dealer. They should be because that's what they're doing. And unless you wake up and discover and realize what's going on, your life is not going to change, and more, more than likely, it's going to end early. And as I approach my 60s, uh, I get to thinking more. Do I, you know, is this, what do I got left, 10 years? You know, men on average, 70 years old, 80 years old. And we're lucky to get there. But if you live an unhealthy lifestyle, which I've pretty much lived, I was a smoker, 35 years, heavy smoker. Thank God I quit 12 years ago. My lungs, I've had them x-rayed several times. I had a CT, CT scan in April. My lungs are normal. Doesn't mean something can't pop up later. So I kind of lucked out on that, but I've had friends pass away very young because of smoking you know when smoking came out oh it was good for you you know you go look in the 20s 30s 40s they advertised on tv till they banned it which didn't didn't stall people starting smoking i mean now they're using vapes which is even worse i mean you're going to get off smoking to go on one of them it's even worse and i am no you know I got on this stuff. This is next. This is my last vice, my last bad habit. And there's no reason for me to be doing it anymore. I've only been doing this 10 years. That's how I got off smoking. The way I seen it, I tried quit smoking so many times and failed. But this delivers the nicotine that the cigarettes had and even more. And it was a way for me to, you know, my lungs would be good. I mean, my lungs are going to survive. The way I was smoking, let me tell you how I quit. I was on my way to work. I lit a cigarette. I took a big drag. And I coughed so hard, I blacked out while I was driving at about 65 miles an hour. And I only blacked out briefly, but enough to get over onto the shoulder and almost hit a concrete wall. I threw the cigarettes out, never touched them again, never touched them again, but I had to go with that. And that is next. And I gave up drinking. I've gave up everything else. And now I'm eating better. Uh, I do not have a large mirror in my house. The only one I have is it has a sign on it. And I had that tucked away in a corner somewhere and I drugged that out last night and I stood in front of it and I couldn't believe that I've lost some I mean with no clothes on <coughs> oh excuse me I couldn't believe how much different I look and it's hard for me to tell but I have really and then when I stepped on the scale this morning I was really happy I won't get into how much I weigh right now because I'm making a video there is going to be more videos on that that I am documenting. So I will just tell you it's quite a bit. Quite a bit. I feel completely different. Now, a lot of people, when they go and they change their life, lifestyle and the foods they eat, they're, they're going to have a little side effect to it. I haven't had that doing carnivore until the last couple of days. And I have not felt good the last couple of days. And I did not know why. And so I have been taking my blood pressure. My blood pressure has been pretty much normal. It was a little elevated the day before yesterday. But, but, but it, even the way, even as elevated as it was, it was way better than it always was before. And that is all back to normal. In fact, it's really good normal. I have not taken blood pressure, any statins. Uh, since I began in May, I just, I quit them. Now, metformin type 2 diabetes is a different story. I have been taking one a day instead of two a day. I've already discussed that with my doctor. 
She said it would be fine. Check my blood. And I've been checking my blood. And that has been very, very good. You know, I was getting readings of 135, 140. I'm in the low 90s, and I even hit 80-something the other day. And that's throughout the day, a couple hours after meals. In the morning, I was getting blood readings of 138, 140, which, you know, it's pretty high. This morning, 96. So I don't know if I should quit taking my metformin. I think I discussed with my father. He said, just break one in half, take half of a pill. And just wean your, I'm going to wean myself off because I still got 30 pounds to go. So when you lose the weight, you're, you're, you're creating all kinds of good things going on in your body. And I'm going to tell you, carnivore is so easy. I don't know why. I mean, I just never heard of it until recently. And then when I first heard of it, I'm like, these people are nuts. I'm here to tell you they're not. It is amazing. It is amazing. If you've never heard of it, carnivore is all you eat. You're eating zero carbs, zero to a minimal amount of carbs. And the way you do that is you eat only meat, beef, chicken, pork. Uh, I eat bacon for breakfast every morning. I eat a half a dozen eggs every morning because i'm a grown man a grown man does not eat two eggs two eggs wouldn't fill up a two-year-old you eat a half a dozen yolk and all i either fry them or i make an omelet and i'll put in a little bit of cheese in the middle of the omelet you can have cheddar cheese there are certain cheeses you can't have like american cheese there's a lot of cheeses out there that are garbage do not eat cheese food Cheese food is not cheese, it's chemicals. And a lot of people eat that because it's cheap or cheaper. And I am more disciplined, I think, than a lot of people are because I'm, I have not snacked. And you can't, there isn't many things to snack on. Pork rinds is basically it. Pork rinds, uh, I might cut up a few small pieces of cheese. You don't want to overdo it on the cheese. I'll make dip out of sour cream for the pork rinds. And here lately, I haven't even messed with them. So snacking, once you cut that out, that's a big part of it. And to me, the rewards is greater. I'm not even suffering because I'm eating a steak every night. And last night, I had a big thing of trout. With a New York strip. Now, ribeyes are the best to eat because you want a steak or some type of beef or pork with a lot of fat on it because your body doesn't have carbs to burn anymore, so it starts burning fat, which it should be doing instead of carbs. We didn't have all the carbs in our diet many years ago. Now we do. And it's up to you. Nobody, Nobody's going to tell you this. You have to figure it out for yourself. And it is the only lifestyle change I have ever done that has done any good. I've tried eating, the, doing the vegan, eating only plant-based diets. It's too complicated, way too complicated. And trying to get good produce in my part of the country, not easy. And then when the pandemic hit, well, you had that issue. There was no produce around here. You would have to travel. And then you got to deal with the restrictions they had in place. I didn't even go in Walmart for almost two years. Did not even step foot because I wasn't going to deal with the stupid masks. I, I hated wearing them. I'll never wear one again. I don't care what happens. I will never put one on my face again unless I'm cutting dusty wood or something. Even then, I don't, I'll do this. <laughs> I just hate the mask. And I don't think we had to wear them like we did. I ain't getting into that. So if you are thinking of trying to make a change, you know, you're either going to want to live or die. Because if you keep gaining weight, you are going to die. You're going to get fat around your liver and then your organs, and your, your organs will suffer, and eventually you will lose that battle. And you got to, once you realize that, 
I mean, here I am, barely four months into it, and I feel completely different already. Now, I went through a couple days, the last few days, and I didn't feel that good. I'm thinking that's some kind of an imbalance with the medication. That is the only medication uh, you have to take electrolytes. I got some liquid electrolytes I put in my tea. Could have been anything. But I'm fine now. I mean, you're going to go through that. But it took a while for it to hit me. And I think that's a good thing, actually. My body, your body is changing. It's going through good changes. So you're going to get that. Well, I think we're going a little long here. But I will be making some videos in the future. Uh, once I get the weight off of me, then it's time to make videos that will help you. Because it... You know, I'm four months into it. I'm basically a newbie. There are people out there. There are videos out there of people that have been on this for for a year or more. It would be better suited to, to show you what to eat. It's pretty simple. It's very simple. It's just basically meat, eggs. You know, that's it. That's it. You cannot stray. You cannot go eat ice cream. You cannot. You have to be disciplined with this but you can eat as much as you want as long as you eat those things and let me tell you i have nothing in my refrigerator nothing uh, my freezer is so full of vegetables that i'm going to get rid of so i can put meat in there uh, i will go back and eat some vegetables but i don't miss any of that i don't miss any of that and if something like this makes me feel this good and lose weight and, and stay healthy Eating, you know, we take eating to be such a pleasure these days. Well, up until the last 150 years, eating was a privilege. You know, they ate what they could have, what they could get. And there was no sauces. There, you know, there were sauces, but they were to cover up the nasty taste of the food that they had available. They would hang meat, you know, they would smoke meat and they would eat on that. Uh, they worked hard. They did not live long. They didn't have immunizations and things, but they didn't live long like they do today. All right, we will do some more podcasts on this subject. I didn't really cover much about the actual carnivore lifestyle is what people on this like to call it, not a diet, because diets fail. Lifestyles do not. Thanks for watching. Happy trade.